journey with you. Uh, in this time, we're headed to the cross of Jesus Christ, uh, where he won the sins, uh, won the forgiveness of the sins for the whole world, and the resurrection too, when we look forward to our celebration on Easter morning. Good to be with you here. Uh, I bet some announcements for you. We had a great auction last night. Party way too hard. I'm not fully awake here tonight. But anyway, we had a great auction, so thank you for everyone. Rex, you're the man. Thank you. For yeah, everything you have done, everything everyone has done for the auction. Great auction last night. Um, probably you were in on Facebook at that moment. <laughs> I deny everything. Um, so let's, yeah, let's see here. Uh, okay. Our online offerings page has a new look. Um, it was so if you use the online giving at Emmanuel, it's ILCABQ.org. Um, it might look a little bit different, or it will look a little bit different now. It's uh, been updated. You might have to sign in with your financial information again. Well, I did. It wasn't hard at all. Uh, but it's one thing to do. So just kind of know that if that's the way you like to give, you might have to do that. Um, so if you have any questions, need help with that, you can talk to David, you can talk to myself, uh, call our church office. Let us know if you need any help. Uh, in the season of Lent, of course, we have our Wednesday midweek services, so we want to invite you to be a part of that. Um, our dinner starts at 5 o'clock in the parish hall. Um, that is a free will offering. Um, it is put on this week by the Wednesday Women's Bible Study. Enchiladas and taquitos are this Wednesday, so you probably want to be there for that. Um, and then we have worship, 6.15, him sitting right in here, and then 6.30 is our worship service. We are starting a brand new series called Singing with the Exiles. I'm going to have you out of here in 45 minutes, I promise you. Uh, come, and, come and try it. Uh, let's see here. And so that's good. A week from tonight, you need to set your clocks ahead an hour. Uh. But okay, it's all right. You'll get another hour of daylight. It'll be so nice. Right? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, next week is spring forward. Uh, more important about Sunday people, so I'll be reminding them this weekend. Um, I'll tell you again next week. Let's see. I want to remind you of Saturday education hour for all ages, adult Bible class in the parish hall, and um, kids with well, Mr. Bond was uh, there today, right? He'd be, he'd be downstairs in the old parish hall right over here. So come join us Saturday education hour. Well, and Mrs. Dillon has a great class. She's studying, she's studying what? Hey, you believe in the cross. The cross for Lent. The cross. That's a good thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Very good. And that's uh, adult Bible class um, upstairs in the new parish hall. Yeah, very good. So we have many Bible study opportunities um, for you. Let's see. That's, good. that's, good. that's really it for tonight. Uh, why don't we stand and get our worship on opening song, Leading to the Cross. <laughs>
is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the power of snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my strength, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. How quickly life can go from smooth and routine to troubled and fearful. How encouraging it is to know of God's protection. Our security comes from his promises kept. Jesus trampled Satan once and for all when he gloriously rose from the dead. We walk in victory even during dangerous times because he is with us and will not let us be separated from his love. Thank you, Thank you Lord, for your security and strength in this perilous world. Amen. Jesus opened the way to salvation, and his new covenant will never be superseded. He creates our faith through the gospel and sacraments, and his spirit brings us to the consummation of our salvation. The Holy Spirit also brings us to our knees in contrition and for the sins we commit. Come now and confess your sins unto God. <laughs>
by his command and the authority that he gives to his church. I forgive all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Will be saved. 
Would you please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel here? Our Gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 4, starting at the first verse. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me. And I can give it to anyone I want. So if you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him alone. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered, it says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. This is our gospel reading for tonight. Please be seated. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word that continually comes to us, which is sweet, which is good, Lord. We ask that in this season of Lent and all the days of our lives, Lord, that we would apply that word to our life, that we would be stirred up in what you have to say, and uh, that we would do those things that you desire us to do, Lord, uh, because you have great blessings for us in it. So tonight I ask you to bless the words of my mouth. The meditations of each of our hearts may be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Dear friends, welcome to the season of Lent. And what I'd like to do in our time together during our weekend worship services, so in the midweek we're doing something different, but in our weekend worship services leading up to Holy Week, what I'd like to do is to take a serious and hard look at God's Word. And in the season of repentance, of refinement, of reaching out for our Savior, I want you to take that Word and apply it to our lives. I want you to examine your lives and hold it up against the standard, not of the world, not of anybody else, but against God's standard. God's will, God's work. And I don't want us just to see how we will and do fall woefully short of what God desires, but I want us to repent, and I want us to do better. That's what the season of Lent is all about. I want us to grow in Christ, indeed pick up our crosses, dying to self, and journey with Jesus to the place where he won righteousness for you, for the whole world, where he won forgiveness and life. The place of the sacrifice of the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Lent is a time to understand the serious nature of our sin, to realize what is at stake for the fallen creation, to be comforted by the forgiveness of our Savior and the life of our Redeemer. And it is also a time to turn, turn away from self, to turn away from the world, to turn away from the vicious trickery and the lies of the evil one. I have chosen the book of James for us to walk through in this season of Lent in our midweek, or excuse me, in our weekend studies. We have five weeks before we get to Holy Week, and we have five weeks to visit the five chapters of the book of James. The question is, why James? Because it is a book that pushes us to do the very things we ought to be doing in the season of Lent, to examine our lives, to hold them up against God's standards, to be forgiven, 
and to grow in our sanctification, which is just a fancy word for saying to grow in being more like him. James is clear about his intentions for us, his readers, in his opening introduction. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, he says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. James speaks the truth. The days are difficult, he says. This life is full of trials of various kinds, and we need to be prepared to stand steadfast in these days. What days? Days of war and of sickness and of persecution. If we are steadfast in this life, then on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, the day of his coming again, the day of our resurrection, we will be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. And here is the driving force of James's epistle. Sometimes it might be said that like, James is the, the Proverbs of the New Testament. Maybe you've heard that. It's the book of wisdom in the New Testament. How do you stay steadfast? James says, well, it's only one way, by the wisdom of God. He says this in verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, which is every single one of us, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach. And it will be given him. Those are the things that we will be visiting in our lives and weekends together. God's wisdom from God's word. It is a wisdom from our high so that we might be prepared steadfastly to face the days here below. He teaches God's wisdom really want to be a mature Christian audience. We want to be spiritually mature. The book of James teaches God's wisdom for a mature Christian audience. We want to be wise. We want to be mature Christians. Paul in his book of wisdom, he wrote a book of wisdom too. First Corinthians is Paul's book of wisdom. First Corinthians chapter 14, 20. Paul writes this, Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Be infants in evil, but in your thinking, be mature. And so the book of James, written by James, the brother of Jesus, leader in the church, writing to a church in a struggling world today, has these words for us. Here is his first encouragement, verses 19 and 20 of the book of James, chapter 1. He says, Know this, my brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Now, the gospel according to the world speaks completely contrary to God's word in this regard. God's word says, be quick to hear. And the world says, close your ears and make up your mind. Close your ears and choose a side. God's word says, be slow to speak. And the world says, speak your minds at all times, anywhere you want. The click of a cell phone keyboard away. Speak your mind. God's word says, be slow to anger. The world says the angriest person is always right. God's word says the anger of a man does not produce the righteousness of God. The world says the anger of man produces results. And that's what matters most. James says we should be 
quick to hear. Hear what? Well, primarily hear God's word. Which informs us how we should, how we can better hear the words, the explanations, and the hearts of our neighbors around us. Returning to God's word continually directs us to right relationship with God and neighbor. And that's what we want. Returning to God's word continually directs us into right relationship with God and neighbor. But, here's the thing, and here's where James is really going tonight. Here's the main thrust of our teaching. For real biblical wisdom, real Christian wisdom, to be steadfast in a world of sin, it is not just enough to be hearers of God's word, but we must be doers also. Now, to be clear, salvation comes through faith, and faith comes through the hearing of the Word of God, the Gospel of Jesus Christ. But sanctification, growing in the faith, walking with Jesus, becoming spiritually mature, becoming wise in a foolish world, and steadfast in difficult times, that comes by hearing and doing what the Word of God says. James says in verse 22, he says, but be doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. If we are only hearing the Word of God and not doing it, not practicing it, we are deceiving ourselves, says James. It means cheating yourself out of something, that's what the Word means. And if we are hearers and not doers, what are we cheating ourselves out of? Some really important, beautiful things. Wisdom. Steadfastness. Mature Christianity. Oh, but that one we always want. A peace that passes understanding. God's word, my friends, is not a theoretical pursuit but a practical discipline. You are not theorists. You are not philosophers. You are disciples. The fruits of God's word for our everyday life come when we put them into practice. James says, if you hear the word of God, but do not do it, do not seek it, do not train your body and your mind. Do not discipline your body and your mind in it. He says it's like this, and he gives us an example. James chapter 1, verses 23 and 24. If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, and then he goes away and at once forgets what he was like. Well, we could spend a lot of time talking about this, but simply put, the world, our everyday life, the struggle and the stress and the entertainment and the news and everything out there, it all has a way of making us forget, leading us away from God's word for our life, clouding the clarity that comes when we read Mark, learn, and inwardly digest God's word. This time, worship, this time is a great time to reflect on God's word, to hear it proclaimed to you, to hear it read for you, to receive the gifts of our Lord Jesus Christ that he won for you. But it is not a theoretical study. All of this is so that you would put it into practice, that you would take what happens in here, out there. We must, as mature followers of Christ, apply the word of God to our lives. Speak his gospel of peace and forgiveness to those who need to hear it. 
curb and thwart sinful behavior wherever we find it in ourselves and around us? You might say, but I thought the law was bad, Pastor, because like we can't do the law like God desires. And that's not true. The law is good. And we seek to do it until the day that Christ makes us everything that God desires us to be. And here is the interesting thing. Here is the wisdom for today. Because this is the book of wisdom, right? When we strive to be hearers and doers of God's word, it is not a burden, but a blessing. The application of God's law is a blessing to our life that frees us to live as God intends. It's a little bit counterintuitive, but it's true. The application of God's law is a blessing on our life that frees us to live as God intends. Here's how James says it, verse 25. He says, don't be like that guy who looks in the mirror and walks away and forgets who he is. He says, but the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Here's the truth, dear friends in Christ. We have begun living eternal life. That's not something you get. That's something you have. You have begun living eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ and all he has done. Christ has died. Christ has risen. You are forgiven and redeemed. Now, one day you will pass from this mortal life into eternal life. A life that you have already begun living now. We are preparing to live it more fully, more gloriously on the day that Jesus Christ returns, on the day that he perfects us. But striving to live out God's word now, not just hear it, not just agree with it, not just study it, not just like it on Facebook, but to actually live it out here and now, striving in these, not just 40 days, but every single day of our life, to live out God's word and to be doers of his word, that blesses our life. How? James is clear. He says, by making us free. He calls it the law of liberty. Liberty. And it's the same word Jesus uses in John 8 when he says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Same word. Free from what? Well, we read it a little bit to get our gospel. Here is Satan's great lie. God's word for you, his desire for you, his law constrains you. That's the law. God's law keeps you from being everything you can be. God's way of living is not fun. It is not desirous. It's something made to keep you from having fun. That's Satan's lie. It is a lie. It's a load of scubala. You can go look at that Greek word. It's a load of scubala. It's a false bill of goods that the adversary has been selling to the children of men since the very beginning. Eat it. If you eat it, you'll be like God. And you'll know good and evil. That will be bad. It will be great for you. And when our life is a mess, a wreck. Then the lion says, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you ate that. God can't love you now. You're not the child of God that you thought you were. And instead of freeing us, doing us our own way, freeing us to live however we want, it shackles us. It makes us slaves. 
to self. Slave to sin. Slave to things that only lead to death. But our Lord has a different way. The truth that sets us free. Our Lord says in Luke chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus speaking says, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God, and not just hear it, but keep it. Observe it. God's word frees us. By directing us to live how God intended us to live. How God created us to live. How he designed and made us to be. And when you are living out God's word, there's nothing quite like it. Because there's no substitute for it. And we only get small glances of this. Because like we don't ever do it well in this life. We are sinners. Need of repentance. We're in need of forgiveness. And that forgiveness has been won and given free of charge for all who believe in Jesus Christ. And he daily strengthens us, renews us, and sets us back on the path of growing in him. And so here's my encouragement for you for every day, but especially in these 40 days of Lent and these weekends with James. You are going to hear God's word. You are. You're going to hear it sing. You're going to hear it read. You're going to hear it preached. You're going to hear it. You are going to hear God's word. So hear it. And do it. Hear it. And do it. Do what it says. Apply it to your life. Read it again and again. And hear it again and again. And then be doers of God's word. So that when we look in the mirror, when we see the things of God and know who we really are, what God's word says about us, that we might not walk away, walk out, and immediately forget who we are. Immediately forget what God has said. But that we should live in them and do them, that the word of God would walk with us, would go out with us. Right beside us, always, everywhere we go. That is what equips us to be steadfast and immovable for the days to come. Amen. Dear Lord, we ask that you would enable us to be hearers and doers of your word. And when we fall short, Lord, we know just exactly where to go into the cross of our forgiveness. Lord, strengthen us, equip us, and send us out day after day to take seriously your word and to put it into action in all that we do and all that we say throughout all of our relationships in life. We give you great thanks. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing. <laughs>
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. O Lord, we thank you that as we live our lives with all the highs and lows, joys and trials, your steadfast love is there for us at every moment. It endures forever through Christ our redemption. Amen. Come now and receive the Lord's Supper, his body and blood, in the bread and wine, given freely for the forgiveness of our sins. His body and blood is a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Come, the table has been prepared. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the very same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it, giving it to his disciples and saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. In the same way, also, when supper had ended, he took the cup. Giving thanks once again, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it, in the remembrance of me. O Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May these gifts of the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you in body and in soul, and to life everlasting, depart in his peace, sins, forgiveness. Amen. We know the kind of lives God calls us to lead, yet too easily we turn away from that calling. God, who implanted his word in us and justified us in Christ, now calls us to bless others. He honors us by using us to bring his love to all people, especially to those whom the world ignores. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Hold it continually before me and bring me to hear it preached and taught. May it be rooted deep inside of me, that it may transform me into your righteous servant. Amen. May you be blessed by the Holy Spirit with grace and peace, and with a fervor to share God's saving mercy through Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want you to stand as you're able for our final song.
very close, all right? So tomorrow is Ruth's birthday. As we do, we want to recognize that. We want to say thanks to God and say happy birthday and God's blessings to her. Let us sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ruth. Happy birthday to you. God's blessings to you. God's blessings to you. God's blessings, to you. God's blessings dear Ruth. Yeah. <laughs>